is a lot of distractions. 18 saves ties his career high, Quint, and he had that career high earlier this season against University of Virginia. 18 saves against him earlier in the season. He may need more than that today, another personal best, if he's going to come out with a W. Interesting. we got to keep our eye on this Virginia defense right here. Are they coming out in a zone, or are they going to match up man-to-man? -man? They emerge from the huddle. We should be able to tell right away. Playing without their best defender towards the tail end of the season, Mark Koontz. This has been a terrific effort by all the Virginia defenders. Looks like man-to-man -man right now. Spencer Wright, Ryan Soliday, over to Hardy. Back to Kaufman behind the goal, but they're really shagging Kaufman. They're trying to shut off Kaufman from the ball. You can hear Tillman Johnson bark out signals. But they're shutting off Powell and Kaufman the ball. They're playing basically four on four with the other players. Soliday lumbers in and takes the hard shot. They're going to give it to Virginia. A little bit of a lazy run by Mike Powell. He thought he had it. But it was the last-minute dive by Brett Hughes. When Brett the Hughes. ball went out, Brett Hughes, the hustle, this clear, huge. Virginia feeling the pressure here. Well, that could do it. Two minutes left if they can just keep control in the box. Under two minutes, you can see the outline of that box. They're going to have to keep the ball it's in there. stay in. It puts a little more pressure on Brendan Moeller. Timeout called. Well, they pulled another one out of their hat. Now Starja seeing Brendan Moeller in trouble, the double team, on his last timeout. The stall offense right now. Virginia's got to ice it. They must keep it in that offensive zone. And you see Starja with his team going for control and just possession for two minutes. He's in a pretty good position. Saw Bliss hurt really has extended the Syracuse defense. They're tired. He is fresher than the Syracuse defense at this moment. Controlling the ball in the fourth quarter has really kept Virginia out of, of tiring in this game. I thought there was a point in this game where Syracuse was controlling the momentum. It looked like Virginia's defense was getting tired. But their ball control and their work on loose balls in their offensive zone Take a look at the brackets. We know that Princeton is waiting with their big win over Johns Hopkins earlier today. And now the two and three seeds are battling it out. Virginia, in front most of this game, are leading now by one. But the winner of this one will meet Princeton 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday, Championship Monday, right on ESPN. Make sure you don't miss that one. We will be back to bring you all that action. 11 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. Virginia will probably handle out of this timeout with John Christmas, their fastest player. Eventually, Syracuse will have to double team here. They'll pull their goalie. Initially, though, I think they'll just play the ball hard until there's about a minute left in the game, and then you'll see Pfeiffer step out. It's a big gamble. One goal, obviously, you can tie it with four seconds on the clock. If you let Virginia score again, you're basically sealing your fate. So it's a delicate balance of extending your defense as you look at the crowd, the Syracuse faithful, boy, they travel some fans, and the Virginia fans are here as well. It'll be Gill to handle against Klatzel. Ball's at the top of the screen as they pick it up. They've got to get it inside the box, and they will be warned. Klatzel, Gill, the marquee matchup. Connor Gill, the MVP, several years ago. Gill trying to buy a call. Good luck trying to buy a call now. Glatzel getting set to go for the takeaway check. Trying to get him on the end line. He doesn't get it. Glatzel tried to push him out, and Gill just holding the ball, not taking the bait and going to the goal. Here comes Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer's coming out the double team. They try the swim move inside all open. Here comes Connor Gill. Ball still in his stick. No call, he was hammered. And Pfeiffer comes out with possession. Glatzel. And Glatzel just throws it away. There's a whole minute left, and Glatzel throws it out of bounds. It's as if John Glatzel thought there was five minutes or five seconds left rather than a minute and five seconds. That was the play earlier. 
that he was successful in hitting Kaufman with that long pass. But clearly not the way you wanted to bring the ball up the field. They had to have possession. Here's Rotelli in the open field against Kaufman. Easy move there. He'll go right by Mike Powell. Ooh. He throws Mike Powell with one of Mike Powell's own moves. Rotelli will carry behind. Christmas is open in front. He's got Pfeiffer on him. Virginia smelling victory. An upset it would be the two seed against the number three seed of Virginia Cavaliers. Syracuse gets it back. Here comes Hardy out of the box. They've got a chance for another shot. Hardy in close. Takes a shot. And Hardy ties the game at 11 with 25 seconds left. The power move of Tom Hardy made it look easy. It was a four-on-four -four situation. Hardy, with a little confidence, split dodges right to left and nails the corner on a shot Syracuse had to make. This is perfect placement. Overhand nails the corner. No fault to Tillman Johnson's terrific jump shot by Hardy. Nails the corner. Huge faceoff coming up. Going to the faceoff circle. Virginia sends Jack DeVillier in there. He's been doing that as a specialty all year long. Syracuse squirts it out, but check from behind. Witty gets a stick on it. Timeout called by Syracuse when they had it in their stick. They will have 11 seconds to win it in dramatic fashion. Virginia has to be absolutely emotionally drained. The game was theirs and somehow slipped out of their fingers in the last 10 seconds. They still can win it, but went emotionally tough to come up to this defensive stand. Here's Hardy picking a good time to isolate. He knows that the defenders are locked on their man, so there's going to be no double team. I mean, who's going to leave Mike Powell to go cover Hardy? Nobody. He realized that, dodged effectively, and nailed the shot. Truthfully, Tillman Johnson's been a wall in the fourth quarter until that shot. Both Johnson and Pfeiffer have played about as well as you could expect in the goal. Strategy right now. Syracuse will come out with a set play. You've got to imagine it'll start with either Kaufman or Powell and end up with a shooter like Mike Springer. They'll have a chance to set it up. Actually, perfect amount of time. 11 seconds, enough to get off a shot. Not enough to go down the other end for Virginia to get one on their side. 11 seconds is enough for Powell to push to the net for himself or Kaufman or draw the double team and maybe get one or two passes and then a shot. No rush with 11 seconds. Up top, Trey Whitty playing long stick defense on the inbound. Trey Whitty set to the left of the screen. Whitty playing defense. Big power move up top. They get it down low. Brian Knee, but it's Tillman Johnson with a huge save. Brian Knee got the shot they wanted, but Johnson pegged it. Syracuse went in the 1 4 1 set. Virginia was in a zone. Nobody bumped out to cover Knee. He got his shot, and Tillman Johnson makes his 15th save and the biggest of his career. An emotional lift for a team that was down for a moment. Syracuse almost pulls it out. Nifty move up top. Dump it down to Brian Knee. Open shot, and Johnson just turns it away. Syracuse scored that goal with less than half a minute to tie the game and send it to overtime. We'll be back with OT from Rutgers. Coming up on Sports Center, Barry Bonds looking for history in a Rocky Mountain High. Tiger Woods looking for history, but he's been rocky at the Memorial. Join us for Sports Center after the game on ESPN. Alain Hurley owns a Hyundai Elantra. I researched it on the internet. There was no comparison. The competition can't match the freedom of America's best warranty. The warranty for the Elantra was the best out there. It also has a long list of features, including front and side airbags. It's the only car in its class that has them standard. The gas mileage is excellent. It's a great value for the money. Get $1,000 cash back or choose 0.9% APR financing now. Freedom is calling, yeah. 
get official World Cup merchandise when you test drive a new Hyundai. Hurry in while supplies last. NASCAR on Fox presents Crank It Up, 18 tracks of all-out rock power. Crank It Up with fuel-injected covers from Les Claypool, Slayer, Head P.E., and Buck Cherry. Plus, remixes and brand new songs from Slipknot, Rob Zombie, Stained, and Tantric. All tracks available only on this adrenaline-powered collection. Crank it up. In stores now. We're back at Rutgers Stadium. Lee Felsmo, Quint Kesnick, Steve Cyphers on the sideline as we look at Virginia. Van Arnsdale, the new coach to the right. Dom Starja, head coach with a V on his hat. This team played an inspirational game. Got off to a 3-0 lead. Had the lead and the ball with 30 seconds to go. A little infraction gave it back to Desco, Johnny Desco and his team. They score with less than 30 seconds left. And now we go to OT. The winner of this will play Princeton on Monday morning at 11 o'clock. Overtime rules, Q. Four minutes will play. Sudden victory or sudden death, depending on which way you like to think about it. Each team gets one timeout. If this faceoff is won and the team carries into the offensive zone, don't be surprised if a timeout is called immediately. Faceoff is what it's all about as they scramble for possession. The Villiers can't get it, finally does. Back to the middle of the field, no possession yet, but the teams are released. Finally, Syracuse, and they'll call a timeout. You can tell the intensity of the work for the loose ball, how important the possession was. Johnny Desco burns his timeout. They want this shot to count. This is how we got to overtime. It was Hardy in transition, right to left jump shot move. Somehow got the ball past Tillman Johnson. Hardy realizing that Virginia's defense was really locked up on their men and that he had space to create the reaction on the sideline. Glances up at the clock, says, hey, I knew we could do it. I knew we could do it. And Quint, it's a tremendous location. You watch how Tillman Johnson played that shot. He was perfect. I thought he played it well. The location of the shot was absolutely perfect. It was on the off stick pipe bounce shot, which is almost impossible to stop. And moving one way, shooting the other way. So Tillman Johnson was stepping to his right, and the ball popped to his left. AMA Motocross coming up next. Stick with us. We will be going to the AMA Motocross right after the conclusion of this overtime game. Semi-final matchup. The number two seeded Syracuse Orangemen and the number three seed Virginia Cavaliers. Kingpins in Division I lacrosse. And the next goal will send the winner to meet Princeton on Monday, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Our coverage will be right here at Rutgers, bringing you all the action. We look forward to seeing you on Monday at 11. Possession off the faceoff. The ball will be in the stick of Syracuse. Mike Powell going to be the trigger man here with Kaufman. You got the two shooters, Springer and Knee. And it looks like Hardy and Spencer Wright inside. It's a 1-4-1 one -one isolation for Powell. Give him the freedom and space to create. Brad Hughes trying to stay with the speedy Mike Powell. Powell trying to draw a double. Up to Hardy, who scored the game tying goal. He's powering in. Great defense by Nick Russo. Power on power. Russo and Hardy. Trey Whitty now playing defense against Spencer Wright. Coffin trying to get open. Good job of cutting him off by Steve Holmes. Now Hardy, who tied the game, will have a chance against Nick Russo to end it. Hardy, power move. Brian Knee, and the stick check by Winnie puts it back to Virginia. Nick Russo, he's going on a fast break. Spencer Wright cuts off the fast break, but here comes Connor Gill. Great play, and now timeout by Tom Stasia as they set up their plan for the winning goal. Aggressive defense by Virginia. Knee got his shot. The windup just took too long. He couldn't uncork it. The sliding Virginia defense got to his stick. And then the clear by Russo. Can't get any more dramatic than this. Watch Knee drop out up in the middle of the screen. Right there, Trey Whitty makes the play. Steps out to Knee as he was winding up. 
and got to his hands before he could get the shot goalward. Watch knee, plant his feet, rotate to let it rip, and there's Witty stepping up and taking one for the team. Wonderful defense. They handle up the field, and Starja calls timeout. Act two of sudden death. Trey Witty, 6-3, biggest block of his life. Quint, the shot by Brian Neat, maybe a little farther out than the play would be designed for. He was pretty far out there. If that ball goes through, I can't imagine Tim and Johnson wouldn't have just collected it and sent the other way. Virginia's got a lot of options here. Matchup-wise, do you go Gill on Glatzel? I doubt it. I really think they'll let Rotelli or the uh, freshman Christmas handle. Christmas, remember, has been a little quiet in the last five minutes, but still, off of all these timeouts, he's got to be fresh and explosive. He is rested, and nobody has seemed to be able to handle Christmas's initial move. He's getting past defenders all day long. If you remember, in the first quarter, Christmas beat his man flat twice and missed the goal. Christmas is not on the field. See if they send him in from the sideline for a matchup. Looks situation. like they're going to have Shannon isolate against Pusha. So, Quint, I guess, is this all about accuracy of shooting? Uh, it's all about matchups. Here he comes, Christmas. Christmas out of the box, yes. Out of the box. Christmas is who they wanted. They want him in the open field, and here he comes. St. George has to meet him in the open field. Christmas will go right by him. Shot wide, and that's what was hurting him in the first half. He just couldn't hit the goal. He can get to the spot for the shot. He's shooting for the post, though. You don't want Pfeiffer to be able to catch your save. Cut in a fine line with that shot. Yavoli. He has been a handful today. This could be the matchup of the day. Yabali, not a good shot. Defense all over. Now, clearing situation for Syracuse. On the run, they're so dangerous. Glatzel, he likes to go to the goal. Bringing the ball down. Glatzel sneaks inside. Doesn't give it up. Glatzel feeling like he can win the game for his team. Out to Springer, who finally controls it. Boy, Glatzel really wanted to take it to the net. Looking for redemption after that turnover late in regulation. Glatzel sniffed that one out for a while. So now the sudden death pressure goes back onto Virginia as Syracuse has their second offensive set in this four-minute sudden death period, the first of however many it takes. Soliday, game tied at 11. Winner plays Princeton in the championship. Kaufman finally gets the ball. When he hasn't been able to get the ball in the last six minutes. Kaufman will try to win the game for his team. Powering in. Looking for help. Kaufman changing direction. Out front. Spencer right. Follow up. Ball loose. And Tillman Johnson pulls it down. Nice clear. They got numbers if they push it. Trey Whitty up front. The long stick as Nick Russo comes in. Russo. It's knocked down. The ball loose. Virginia still corrected. Moeller and Russo working in a tandem. So powerful in transition and on the defensive end. Again, the second chance with 50 seconds left. This will be the last part of the shot and a chance to win Let's it go, go. in the first sudden death. Go, go. Christmas, he'll have a chance right here. Ball loose. Pfeiffer gets it in his stick. Unbelievable. Pfeiffer calmly picks it out of midair. Billy St. George looking for an opening. Off the sideline. Syracuse. Short clock here. Sean Lindsay gives it to Kaufman. Kaufman didn't have an effective move last time. Let's see if Kaufman can get it together in the final seconds of the first overtime. Kaufman working inside. Double team. Looks up top. Lawson. Picked up beautifully by Trey Whitty again. Watch the check. Time will expire in the first overtime period. Folks, fasten your chin straps. We got to do it again. Leg cramps on both ends of the field. Tillman Johnson has been as good as you can be, as well as Pfeiffer. These two guys have played the best game in the goal for a pair of goalies that I've seen in many years. When we come back, our second overtime period. NASCAR on Fox presents Crank It Up, 18 tracks of all-out rock power. Crank It Up with fuel-injected covers from Les Claypool, Slayer, Head P.E., and Buck Cherry. On the 
Plus, remixes and brand new songs from Slipknot, Rob Zombie, Stain, and Tantric. All tracks available only on this adrenaline-powered collection. Crank it up! In stores now. That was an incredible two-day solid jazz marathon. And now, by request, here's another two-day marathon. The Suzuki Intruder LC1500. You'll do anything to keep riding. Visit your local Suzuki dealer and get $300 cash back or low APR during Suzuki Summer Sizzler event. We're back at Rutgers Championship Weekend, exclusive ESPN coverage of our NCAA Championship Series. Second overtime coming up. It has been a dogfight of the best teams in Division I lacrosse. Watch the goalie play from Virginia. Tillman Johnson, the poise, the focus to find the ball in overtime, and then, then at the other end, it's Piper. Christmas pushes to the cage. The ball clicks out right there. He's all over it. Catches that rebound, both goalies toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Steve Cyphers, this game is getting critical, and the two goalies you talked about are a big part of it. Leave one thing to note about these two teams' overtime history. They played each other twice in overtime regular season. They are one and one. Syracuse this year is one and zero, oh, having beaten Brown in overtime. Interesting to note Syracuse tournament record in overtime: two and three in semifinal games, zero and two. The pressure on the defense of Virginia. Timeout. Time Syracuse coming off of the faceoff victory. Syracuse with an unlikely fast break off the faceoff. Virginia has been doing such a great job there with the Villiers. But now Desco will have the first chance in the second overtime to put pressure on Dom Starja and his Virginia Cavaliers. In the first OT, their initial play started with Mike Powell. Virginia chose to stay man-to-man. -man. We haven't seen the zone defense for a while. If you're Syracuse, again, I think you got to go back to your strengths. Josh Kaufman or Mike Powell. Everything feeds off of their ability to run past their man. AMA Motocross coming up right after the finish of this overtime game. Could end any second, and we'll be taking you right to the AMA Motocross on ESPN2. John Desco, he's been in so many of these big games. Both teams loaded with talent. I think the two goalies today, Quinn, have played collectively as good a game as I've ever seen. They have been sensational. Both teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe in an all-out effort. Now, that's Witty. He's been down two or three times with leg cramps. Remember how important Witty was blocking the passes. Let's watch if he is effective out there running on that leg that's cramping up. Number 15, Trey Witty. Jay Pfeiffer, 19 saves today, a career high. The career high was 18 set against Virginia earlier in the season. Dillman Johnson, 15 today, and he has been unbelievable as well. Springer handles. He scored the overtime game-winning goal against Brown. Tom Hardy put it into overtime. He'll get a chance, possibly, to send it into a victory column. He takes the bounce shot again, same placement when he just missed it. He had Johnson a little off balance. The shot was on the slow side, and sometimes that can be confusing. Michael Powell causing problems all day long, now has the ball. Solidin, rocket. Big save by Tillman Johnson. Ball loose still, and it'll be picked up by Tom Hardy. Push, ball, Cavaliers ball. The loose ball in front, the rebound. I tell you, we've seen a lot of pushing as Nick Russo brings it up. And now, of course, a timeout called by Dom Starja. Predictable control by two head coaches trying to get the winning goal. Tough call to make in the second overtime push. How many pushes have we seen not called? And uh, it was a good call, but I tell you, this game has been very physical late and in the overtimes. They've had a lot of different mixes. John Desco now setting up his defense against probably Johnny Christmas initiating the offense. Here are the Syracuse attempts on that last possession. The first of the second overtime. Hardy right there. You see Johnson just kind of lunging at that. The ball stays inbound. Desco reaction. 
thinks it may go, doesn't. The frustration then on the push call as that push call becomes a turnover and now Virginia will control. If you're Virginia, you gotta go to Christmas. He's had the shots. Quint, the only thing that Christmas hasn't done is hit the net very often. He's getting his shots almost every time. Last time the ball popped out of a stick. The time before he just missed the goal. In the, the first two minutes, Virginia, he the when Christmas handles, is the other players need to occupy their men and give him some space because his speed does require that he gets some space. So you've got to occupy your men. I would expect Syracuse to really double up on Christmas quickly, force him to pass the rock. They'll start with Rotelli, number 25. Their All-American midfielder. He comes out to get it. You're looking at Johnny Christmas. But Rotelli, 25, will start with the ball. Rotelli has room. The pick works. The shot wide of the net. Wow, that was a scary moment. He was wide open. A simple pick play. Syracuse a little slow to switch up. Yaboli. Christmas. On the wing, Billy St. George can't get the ball out of the stick. Christmas wants to end it right here. Goes for the corner and it goes high. He says he was in the crease. Referee called. Christmas dances on the line. It goes to Syracuse. Again, Johnny Christmas's athletic ability gets him within eye-to-eye -eye sight of the goal. A last second check. Let's see if he steps on the line. No. No. Don't see it. Don't see him in the crease on that possession. Tough call for Christmas, who looked like he just played it perfectly. UVA out shooting Syracuse 54 to 48. It's off. And now oh, Syracuse, second overtime, and their second offensive set in this second overtime. Tillman Johnson tapping the pipe. And you hear him barking out defensive signals. Soliday's got the great outside shot, but Brendan Moeller has plenty of speed to keep up with him. Mike Springer gives it to Hardy, who has really turned out to be the matchup. Hardy against Nick Russo, and Hardy gives it up. Ryan Soliday likes his left hand. Let's see if he goes for it. Brendan Moeller will go far across the back of the goal to Kaufman. Kaufman definitely has enough leadership and veteran experience that he wants to end it. He wants to take this team on his shoulders. Kaufman pressuring in. Springer with the big gun. Hughes hanging Ten. tough. Hughes hanging tough on that defense. Springer inside. This is the mark. Ball tip but stays on the thick grass. 106, coming down, second overtime, Kaufman. To our time, trophy finest, turns and fires. Powell picks it up, tries to get it back to Kaufman, can't do it. Will it stay on this half of the line? It does. Hardy picks it up. Can Hardy get momentum right here and go right to the cage? Hardy with a little bit of room against Nick Russo. How many times can you ask Tillman Johnson to bail you out? That was a serious save. Hardy's got a little bit of rest now. Takes Russo to the cage, reverses space, comes back, fakes high, goes low. Hardy single-handedly wins it against the Virginia Cavaliers. What a game for Tom Hardy, and what a tough loss for Virginia and their sensational goalie, Tillman Johnson. He was left to hang out to dry, but a great move behind the goal. Hardy coming in. Only 12 goals on the season, but he was a senior. And I guarantee that's why Coach Desco put him on the field, scored the game-tying goal with 25 seconds to go. Syracuse wins in double overtime, and they get the right to meet Princeton in the finals. Virginia, what can you say? They were good enough to win. They just didn't get it done. Watch that move right there. That was the move that made it fake high, go low. Hardy with a great final 15 minutes of this day. Game tying and game winning goal. A midfielder behind the net. He hangs his defender up. There's no help there defensively. The reaction shot, shot on the sideline. Four years in a row. That man, John Desco, is going to the finals. The fi